Today was leg day at the gym, so I'm in a great mood. I feel amazing. And in celebration of that, we're going to be evaluating this incredible looking integral here. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log sine x divided by the square root of sine x times the cosine of x. And the structure indeed looks beautiful, but how on earth do we approach this? Well, I'm going to use Feynman's trick of differentiating under the integral sign. And for that, I'm going to need an integral function. And for this case, there's a very nice, very special function that could play the part. And in case you're a longtime viewer of the channel, in case you're a regular viewer, you would have guessed by now correctly that I'm talking about the beta function with complex arguments u and v. So this here is defined as twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the 2u minus 1 of x times the cosine to the 2v minus 1 of x dx. Now, how exactly does the beta function help in getting us to the target integral? Well, for that, all we have to do is differentiate partially with respect to the u variable. So in this case, of course, we can switch up the order of the integration and the differentiation operators because we know that the integral for the beta function will converge for all values of u and v in its domain. So on the switch up, we have twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the partial derivative with respect to u of sine to the 2u minus 1 of x times the cosine to the 2v minus 1 of x dx. So differentiating partially with respect to u, we get twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the 2u minus 1 of x times cosine to the 2v minus 1 of x times the logarithm of this constant base of sine x. And because of the chain rule, we have an extra factor of 2 as well. So that means we have 4 times this integral rather than twice it. And we're pretty close to our target case. All we have to do is plug in suitable values for u and v. And in this case, the suitable values are u and v both being a quarter. So this implies that the partial derivative of the beta function with respect to u at u and v both being a quarter equals 4 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log sine x dx divided by 2u minus 1 in case you plug in u equal to a quarter would be negative 1 half. So that means we have the square root of sine x times cosine x in the denominator. And this here is exactly four times our target integral i. So that means all we have to do is evaluate this derivative at these values of u and v and divide the whole thing by four and that'll give us our target integral. Now the question is, how exactly do we evaluate this derivative? That's actually a pretty easy question to answer because we can invoke my favorite special function, the gamma function. So beta u v equals gamma u times gamma v divided by gamma u plus v, right? So differentiating this partially with respect to u gives us a gamma v term outside and inside we have this gamma u plus v term times gamma prime u minus gamma prime u plus v times gamma u divided by the square of the gamma function evaluated at u plus v. Okay, cool. And to just simplify the structure a bit, we could invoke the digamma function. So we know that digamma s equals gamma prime s divided by gamma s. So this implies that the derivative of the gamma function can be written as the product of the gamma function times the digamma function, which is an extremely cool relation simply by virtue of the definition of the digamma function, of course. 
So this implies that we have partial beta by partial u being equal to gamma v all times gamma u plus v times gamma u times di gamma u plus gamma u plus v times gamma u times di gamma u plus v. And all of this is divided by gamma square, oh, terribly sorry about that, gamma square u plus v. Okay, cool. And now we can just take a bunch of terms. We can factor out a bunch of terms, right? We can factor out a nice gamma u term to go with this gamma v term. We're dividing by gamma squared u plus v, but we can also factor out a gamma u plus v term anyway, so one of them gets cancelled out quite nicely, quite conveniently indeed. And we're left with di gamma u. Oh wait, there was a minus sign over here, terribly sorry about that. Minus di gamma u plus v. Alrighty then. And this here is the exact same structure for the beta function, right? So we have this nice relation that partial beta by partial u equals the beta function, repeated here, times di gamma u minus di gamma u plus v. And all that's left is to plug in the required values of u and v, and that is one quarter. And before moving forward, I'd just like to thank each and every one of you. You guys are an amazing community. You're an amazing fan following here on YouTube. Thank you so much for helping me upgrade my setup. I'm really enjoying the experience of writing on this improved and much bigger screen real estate. This is a lot better than the previous experience because there isn't any strain on my back or my shoulders. My eyes are at a healthy distance away from the screen. And you all know how much I love solving crazy and rules and differential equations and I love making these videos for YouTube and this is pretty much what I'm doing full time now anyway and this is incredible fun this is this is what I really love doing and I'm very very happy and I'm very thankful to all of you for helping me make this healthier because writing on the phone screen on, on a tiny phone screen was becoming more and more stressful that there was you know just increasing strain on making videos especially when there was when there was something technical like contour integration where i had to make diagrams and all that those kind of videos required multiple takes several takes so i loved solving those integrals i loved making those videos i loved the idea of making those videos but you know just making them became sort of a headache but i never you know just leave a video undone if I started it, I would want to at least complete it. And now it's a lot easier. This is a much more, it's more fun and more healthy now to make videos. So thank you all once again. And we ain't stopped them with the crazy math. And I forgot exactly what we were doing. Yeah, of course, we had to plug in the required values of U and V. So that's a quarter. So this implies that the partial derivative of the beta function with respect to u at these values, the required values, equals the beta function at one quarter and one quarter times the di gamma function at a quarter minus the di gamma function at one half. Okay, cool. Now this beta function term can be expressed quite nicely in terms of gamma functions. So we know that the numerator consists of the product of gamma functions. So that means we have gamma squared a quarter divided by gamma one half. And gamma one half is famously root pi, correct? So that's what we have down here. And here we have the di gamma function evaluated at one quarter. And for di gamma one half, I'm going to write this as gamma prime one half divided by gamma one half. And I have this Instagram post link in the description below where I've solved important derivatives of the gamma function. One of them is at one half. So this term here sorts out to being 
negative root pi times Euler Masperoni constant plus log 4 divided by root pi. So the root pi terms cancel out quite nicely, and we have this beautiful Euler Masperoni constant as well. So yeah, that makes things all the more sweet. So we have gamma prime, uh, we have the square of the gamma function at one quarter divided by root pi times di gamma one quarter plus Euler Mascheroni plus log four. Okay, cool. So that's the derivative of the beta function with respect to the u variable. But remember, our target integral was one fourth of this. This derivative is four times our target integral. So that means i is in fact all of the stuff divided by four. And there's a really nice way to express this term outside in terms of another important constant called the lemniscate constant. Okay, so I keep forgetting the structure of the lemniscate constant. So shout out to Zanate Parker who advised me to make scripts for my videos in case I forget something. And I don't normally make scripts, but I'm, I've gotten into a habit of making notes and keeping them near to me. So according to my script, the scene shifts towards Mia Malkova, who exclaims in a seductive manner, help me step professor, I'm stuck. Wrong script. Okay, I found the correct script this time. So the lemniscate constant, that's omega bar, is the square of the gamma function at a quarter divided by twice the square root of 2 times pi. So here, what we'll have is in fact the lemniscate constant divided by 2 times root 2. Correct? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So this implies that our crazy looking integral has a crazy looking and beautiful result indeed involving all of these really nice constants. We have root 2 by 2 times the lemniscate constant times the euler mascheroni constant plus the di gamma function at a quarter plus twice of log 2. Now, this is epic. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.